good afternoon everyone i'm dr apaji krishnan spine surgeon from chennai uh, welcome to this iacon basic sciences uh, work workshop on spine surgery i'm going to talk on thoracic pedicle screw insertion uh, we'll i'll be initially talking on the uh, regular thoracic pedicle screw and then and also give touch upon a deformed spine and give some salvage options so uh, basic anatomy of thoracic pedicle so pedicle screw uh, insertion we should know about four dimensions of a pedicle one is the transverse pedicle angle that is the angle which is caused by these two lines the transverse width of the pedicle that is the maximum width of the pedicle in the transverse angle the cord length or it's the screw length which is from the starting point till the anterior cortex of the vertebra the starting point and the insertion techniques also should be spoken about so the transverse pedicle angle as we were uh, discussing actually it's around 30% convergent at t1 as you can see here and it starts decreasing or almost to neutral at t12 so you may have to have or just a 5 degree convergence or a 5 degree divergent screw at uh, t12 wherein t1 it will be convergent at 30 degrees the minimum uh, most of the uh, other angles will be around 13 to 15 degrees of, of all the other pedicles the transverse pedicle angle is calculated in two ways one is as we can see number 2 that is a convergent angle that is calculated between the uh, transverse line along the spinous process and the pedicle so these are all already available and uh, one need not do a ct scan to learn about this so pedicle screw insertion the next one is we should know, also know how thick a screw we can use so the thinnest pedicle in thoracic spine is at t4 which is around 4.7 mm the widest is at t12 which is around 7.8 mm so the commonest screws which are used uh, in the thoracic spine up to t10 will be a 6.5 above t10 it will be uh, 5.5 and t4 you have to be careful but you can still use a 5.5 mm screw uh, the asian population uh, the pedicle width is slightly smaller than the caucasian the cord length is the shortest at t6 which is around 40 mm and the longest is at uh, t uh, t12 which is 47 mm so the longest screw in thoracic spine will be a 45 mm a t12 and you can use 40 mm almost till t1 t sometimes t1 t2 because of the angulation if you're not getting a 30 degree angulation of t1 t2 screws you may end up uh, using only 30 to 35 mm screws the screw length has to be calculated accordingly so dorsal cortex to the pedicle isthmus usually is around uh, 12.2 mm the, it varies between 11 to 13 mm in the thoracic spine so the point of entry to the isthmus in the pedicle is usually around 12 to 13 mm the pedicle screw insertion uh, we should know the starting points so there are three starting points one is a direct starting point as you can see here it's on it sits on the uh, pedicle the second one is a funnel where the tp meets the lamina it's a funnel technique and the third one is a transverse process technique wherein uh, the uh, starting point is on the middle of the transverse process the insertion technique is two types one is a straight forward technique which is uh, now popularized by lawrence lenke so it is a, a insertion where wherein you start in the middle of the pedicle and then goes directly inward and harms and poly described an anatomical wherein you start at the superior end of the superior facet and then go downward so there are two uh, insertion technique and angles which are followed one is an anatomical one is straight forward the pedicle screw insertion in the sagittal plane usually it's around it's around 10 to 15 uh, degrees according to the indian study from the aims from uh, professor jaiswal's unit the uh, caucasian population is around 12 to 18 degrees so the sagittal plane angle decreases uh, increases as you go upward towards the 
T1 and then decreases as you come down towards T12. Technique, uh, techniques of insertion of a pedicle screw commonly used is a freehand technique. Uh, I will show you a video plus uh, how to do it. Image guidance, uh, lateral radiography and fluoroscopy, which is very important. You can also use navigation and robotic guidance. Most of us do not have access to these. Uh, techniques of screw insertion, uh, the freehand technique you should have, uh, you should know the starting point for each and every uh, level. You, you should, there is a chart available in the linkage uh, technique. So the freehand technique starts with meticulous exposure. You should have cortical burst to expose the uh, uh, pedicular blush and the pedicular palpation through seekers. You can also use uh, image guidance, which can be a lateral radiography, which can be uh, uh, X-ray taken during insertion or a live CM fluoroscopy. So uh, the insertion starts at the junction of the bisected transverse process, as you can see here, most of the transverse process are bisected and the lamina at the lateral pass. You should not go, it's, it's, it's almost similar to the lumbar spine, except that the facet joint here is in a horizontal plane and then the uh, superior facet is hidden beneath the inferior facet here. So you will be at the pars at that point where the in, uh, transection of transverse process meets the lateral pars. That will be the insertion point. Uh, most of it uh, tends towards uh, in the uh, lower uh, dorsal spine, it is towards the caudal length and towards the upper uh, thoracic spine from T uh, eight onwards, it will go to the uh, cranial end of the uh, transverse process. And again, from T2 and T1, it will be at the middle of the transverse process. So this is a paper from Lenke describing the thoracic freehand pedicle screw placement in thoracic spine and how safe it is. So uh, the incision uh, should be uh, uh, good, adequate, and exposure should be the till the tip of transverse process. So the entire spinous process, lamina, the joints, and the tip of transverse process should be uh, exposed. We can use a burr, a cortical burr to start. So once we determine the starting point, just burr so that you uh, expose, remove the cortical bone and expose the cortical blush. Then using a gear shift probe like this, you can actually, this is, uh, uh, Lenke calls it gear shift, but we all call it as Lenke's probe. So uh, we usually insert with the convex side uh, facing the uh, medial end. Initially, search for a soft spot and let the pedicle finder fall into the pedicle. Do not force it inside. After inserting around 12, 15 millimeters, which I told you is the uh, isthmus of the pedicle, you have to remove the probe and then reinsert it with the concave side facing medially so that you can have a medial angulation of the screw. So this is called the gear shift maneuver uh, described by uh, Lenke, uh, but we call it Lenke's maneuver. So these, these are the uh, points you can see here clearly how you will insert convex side facing the medial end. And then once you cross the isthmus, turn it to go medially. So the uh, Lenke probe has actually a small angulation which goes in. So a cortical burr and uh, you can see the blush there. So the insertion uh, with the convex side facing medially and then gear shifting to face medially. Then you will use a flexible ball to pedicle probe or a pedicle sound to make sure you're not breached any of the walls. So you have to palpate five distinct bony borders, superior, inferior, medial, lateral, and anterior also. Most of the time you might not have palpated anterior. Anterior will give you the depth of the screw. Some people do tapping, so we I do tapping. So I use a tap and then repalpate again using the uh, probe so that I, I will know that I have not breached any of the walls and then the screw is placed. So screw length, you should, uh, you, we usually under tap uh, one millimeter less. Then again, I will palpate and then place the screw very uh, slowly so that we can use a viscoelastic expansion of the pedicle uh, to our benefit. So measurement of the screw length and then insertion of the screw as you can see here. An ideal screw in the thoracic spine should be in the center of the pedicle. There should be no violation of the pedicle walls in a proper trajectory. And you should have a of very good proper cord length and also the diameter of the screw. 
a short video here. So I, I instead of using a burr, I've used a nibbler to decorticate the bone there. This is a T12 uh, screw. So I've, I'm using the Lenke probe of the gear shift, going the convex side in first. I reached up to 10, 15 to 20 millimeters, removed the probe, turned it, turned the concave side inward, inserted till 20 millimeters, and then getting into the probe there. So now I use this ball tip probe to palpate the walls and also see how much depth I have to reach. That's the anterior end plate. So again, I check. So all four walls and the anterior walls, so five walls. This I've, I've used a tap, which is 4.5 millimeter. So I always tap till around 35 to 40 millimeters since I've measured 45 millimeter as my screw length. And then I've, usually I will palpate after uh, tapping. Uh, I think I missed in this video. So that's a screw in. So this is in a, a, a real time speed. I've not speeded up this video. So you can uh, know that it can be done at this speed also. So I've also uh, showed the next uh, DT11 also, wherein I have used the same maneuver. I used the uh, nibbler to decorticate the outer cortex. Now I see the pedicle blush there. That's a cancellous bone. I've used the gear shift with the convex side medially. Insert till about that, that'll be the 20 mark. So I insert till the 20, take it out, turn the probe with the concave side facing medially, then go in again. Do not push the probe with too much of force, just try to get the soft spot in. Again, palpate with the ball tip probe. You can feel the anterior stop there. I palpated all the other walls and insert the screw directly. This is without tapping. So how to confirm that the screw is in good position? So you can either do a fluoroscopy in AP and lateral or a radiograph in AP and lateral. And sometimes you can use an interoperative uh, screw EMG or uh, a post insertion 3D imaging if you have the facility like the OAM or interoperative CD scan. In the deformed spine, the, uh, the thoracic pedicle screw is uh, really challenging because there is a huge uh, change in the anatomy and morphometry of the scoliotic pedicles. You should have very sound knowledge before uh, attempting in a deformed sp uh, spine. But uh, the first papers came from Suk et al. in 1995, where uh, he described that uh, the thoracic uh, pedicle screw is possible in uh, uh, deformed scoliotic spine, but it became quite um, useful or people started using it more after 2000s only, from 2002, 2003, after the Lane case paper. So it's a huge learning curve, uh, less complications with experience. The 3D anatomical orientation of the deformed spine, you should have a 3D orientation. If you uh, either do a CT scan, read the uh, orientation, and you should plan meticulously before uh, uh, embarking on inserting a thoracic pedicle screw in a deformed spine. So in the scoliotic spine, you should be aware that the dural sac is uh, shifted towards the concavity. The pedicles at the concave side are very thin and short, and the pedicle width uh, uh, on the concave side is maybe even absent. So you may not even have, you may have a very thin sliver of bone and we, you may not have a, a width of pedicle that is known. And the cord length will vary between uh, the two sides from the convex and the concave sides. So when you do a CT scan, you should not get a section like this. You should ask for a pedicle oriented section where you can learn the pedicles or see the pedicles properly. And uh, uh, in the scoliotic spine, as I said, the uh, uh, the pedicle is uh, thinner and shorter on the concave side than on the convex side. The spinal canal diameter is also smaller on the concave side and spinal cord is shifted to the concave side. So you should be very, very careful not to uh, insert a screw into the canal in the concave side. And you should have a 3D orientation uh, before uh, inserting the uh, pedicle screw in the thoracic. 
So concave side will be more horizontal and the convex side will be a more vertical uh, screw placement. So convex will be a more vertical and the concave side will be a horizontal screw placement. The, uh, the, uh, actually, Professor Jaiswal has described this wind swipe deformity of pedicles wherein both the uh, pedicle will be like in a wind swipe uh, deformity as you can see here. The, the convex side is also bent and the concave side is also bent towards the same side. So we can use uh, various other options of screw insertion technique. So you cannot, you usually it's very difficult to go through a thin pedicle. So you'll use either an open lamina laminotomy technique or an in out technique wherein you'll use the pedicle rib as a single unit to insert the screw. So these, are, mind you, these are for uh, highly uh, challenging, uh, these are for highly experienced surgeons as these are highly challenging uh, procedures in a deformed spine. So the newer techniques are either to use a navigation in two dimension or in three dimension, where you can actually uh, live navigate the screw and the screw length. The third and the most important is the, uh, the latest is the techniques of screw insertion using a robot. So robotic guidance, uh, these, uh, I mean, only few centers in India have it, uh, three or four centers. So this is one of the planning for a thoracic screw. You can see how they plant the screw between the rib and the uh, pedicle here in both the sides. And that's how a uh, robot helps. This is the first generation robot. And uh, this is from uh, uh, Dr. Sajanik Day's unit. And most of the time, uh, the pedicle actually, there is an expansion. So there is a viscoelastic property of the end bone in this deformed spine, wherein you can have an expansion of the pedicle to 111% from their normal width. So you can safely use 4.5, 5.5 millimeter screws. And the pedicle fracture of the lateral wall is seen in these uh, patients in 72%. Uh, when you fail to do these, then you will have to go for a salvage options, uh, changing the trajectory anatomical. If you have used an anatomical, go to in and out or an in and out technique, go to an anatomical technique. You can use hook construct, you can use sublaminar wires or sublaminar bands. The complication thoracic spine pedicle screw is uh, direct injury to the cord, a hematoma because you have fractured the medial wall or a lat leg screw pull out. Vascular injuries, direct injury to major vessels because on the side of thoracic uh, uh, vertebra is iota and the uh, IVC. Some of these uh, screws can injure the uh, great vessels and some of these patients even have died on table. Visceral injury is quite rare, pleural injury and lung injury. Uh, uh, injury to thoracic duct in deformed spine and in uh, tubercular spine is also known. So in conclusion, thoracic pedicle screw insertion is safe. It's difficult, but feasible in deformed spine, but though it has a big learning curve, image guidance, navigation and robotics have helped uh, increase the accuracy of uh, thoracic pedicle screw. The complications though rare in thoracic pedicle screw insertion can be severe leading to a paraplegia. Thank you one and all. Mm -hmm.